Hello, students of statics. This is Dr. Dan Baker. And in this video, which is going to be a short one, we're going to talk about friction acting on wedges. Okay, so fundamentally, the only difference between blocks, which we talked about in the previous video, and with wedges is going to be that wedges have a bit more complicated um, components because the angles change. Okay, so if we have a block and there's some rollers here on the sides to keep this block moving vertically. And let's say that underneath this block, we have a wedge. And the wedge is sitting on a horizontal surface. And let's say that we have a weight of this upper block. And for this problem, let's say that we have a pushing force here on the side of the wedge. All right, so if we create free body diagrams of this system, we have our upper block, we have our wedge. Now we know that the weight force is certainly contributing to the interaction between these blocks. We also know we have this pushing force. And so as we think about what this pushing force might represent, it might be the minimum force to raise the weighted block, right? To raise W. Um, we might have other conditions where we would want to control the lowering of that weight, and maybe we'd, then we'd flip P around and go the opposite direction. Okay, so there's multiple kinds of problems. But for this one, let's talk about raising the block. Okay, so let me put it right here. So find the free body diagrams to compute the minimum P to raise the block. All right. So one thing to notice is that our normal forces always, always, always perpendicular to the surface. Okay, so these normal forces 100% of the time are perpendicular to the surface. Now we need to give them different labels if they're fundamentally different forces. Okay, so it turns out these normal forces will not be equal to one another. They'll be close in value, but not exactly equal. And so call this one N1, this one up here N2. And again here, equal and opposite. So I have an N2 acting on the upper block. Okay, that takes care of my normal forces. Now, when you're looking at your friction forces, it's usually easiest to start with whatever force is driving the system. Okay, so in this problem right here, so in this problem right here, it's this pushing force that's basically creating the friction in this system. Okay, so friction again is going to be perpendicular to the normal forces along the surface, and so this is going to be F1. This one here is going to be F2. And then equal and opposite again up to the upper block. And so for the upper block here, we'd have friction coming down this way, F2. And I do need to include, if the friction is going that direction, it is very likely we're going to need, call this N3, coming from that roller on the far side in order to provide the horizontal confinement of that upper block. So now in looking at these angles, okay, so if we add here that there is an angle here, alpha, we don't need to worry about alpha as it's related to N1 and F1 because they're along the surface. But we do know here that N2 is going to be alpha from vertical just like F2 is alpha from horizontal. Same here with N2 and F2 on the upper block. Okay, so that alpha then, which is this wedge angle, directly plays into the components of the friction and normal force on this system. And so if you're going to solve this problem, it's usually best to go from knowns to unknowns. And you can think that in this problem, if we count our number of unknowns, we have one, two, three, four, five, right? We're solving for P, and this would be six up here for the normal force. So it would turn out that we do have enough equations, and it would turn out we'd have enough equations 
whether we were solving an impending motion problem or whether we were solving a static but not impending problem. Right? Remember, for static but not impending, we cannot use f equals mu sub s times n, but for impending motion, we can. And so we could solve this either way, um, depending on how the problem is stated. Now, this problem statement says minimum. Right? There's that extreme language that's telling us that this is going to be an impending motion problem because of that statement of a minimum force P. So otherwise, we're still creating free body diagrams. We are still adding an axis to these free body diagrams. Um, on this problem, I think I would just go with the horizontal x, vertical y. There's enough forces lining up with that axis system. Certainly, there is n2 and f2 that are off axes, um, but it's really your choice. I think there'd be a few more forces lined up with the x, y, horizontal, vertical. We create our free body diagrams. We set up our equations of equilibrium, and we solve it out just like any other problem that is a frame and machine type problem. Thanks for your attention.